just wanted to make a short video on how I personally deal with chronic illness as an atheist. My first one would be um, having doctors that I trust. Um, when I have doctors I trust, I feel so much more comfortable with like the treatment plan and um, their ability to find out what's going on with me. So if I feel comfortable and I know that they respect me and take me seriously, um, my anxiety is a lot less. And when you're in diagnosis limbo, like I am now, you wait a lot. I have been waiting for answers, um, like actively for about a year now, I would say, which is a long time. And so, um, we have gotten a few answers, but we haven't got any of the big answers we're looking for. So, so when you're waiting, my best advice would be to distract yourself and remind yourself that you've done everything you can and make sure you've done everything you can. Don't let doctors and nurses and people walk all over you. If you don't agree with it, with their, if you don't agree with what they're saying, speak up. Um, because if you don't, you're gonna get the wrong treatment. I didn't speak up once when there was a misunderstanding, and the doctor, and the doctor actually almost killed me. So it's very, very, very important that you speak up, and like, you know, almost kind of be your mini doctor, I guess. Because you are kind of your own mini doctor, you take care of yourself all the time. So, I just feel so much more comfortable when I know that I have advocated for myself to the best of my abilities. And it's awesome if you have somebody that you can bring with you to your appointments that can advocate for you even on those days that you can't. Because I know a lot of the time when, my, when I'm on my bad days and I have to go to the doctor, like, I don't advocate for myself as much. And then later on when I'm feeling better... I kind of feel shitty almost and guilty because I missed a bunch of things I wanted to say. So if you can, you know, tell the person that's going with you what you want to talk about beforehand, that'll be very, very helpful. And so I recommend that you do that. Um, my next thing would be bigger, my next thing would be be your biggest advocate. When you advocate for yourself, things seem to happen a lot faster and um, people take you more seriously, I think, and they get better information, you know? So when you're going to the doctor, you're, if you don't speak up for yourself, the doctor's not gonna know things. And if he doesn't know things, or um, know all the information that he needs to know, he's not gonna be able to help you as much. So even if you think it's like the most stupidest detail, you tell them. At least I do. Um, so I just think it's important to advocate and, you know, even look into your own stuff. So research your own um, symptoms. You know, if I didn't research about interstitial cystitis, I never would have gotten diagnosed. And I definitely wouldn't have gotten diagnosed with postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome if I didn't research about my symptoms either. So it's sad, but there are people out there that never get their diagnosis because they're just, you know, relying on a doctor. And relying on a doctor is very, very important. But, you know, it really sucks, but most things don't get done unless you do them yourself. So that's kind of like the attitude I have about it. Like, if I don't push people to do what they what they need to do and tell, um, like, my symptoms and make sure that they understand it, they're not going to diagnose you correctly. Because I was misdiagnosed with, um, what did they diagnose? They diagnosed my IC as anxiety when I was a kid, which I don't understand how anxiety is supposed to make your urethra burn, but doctors are weird, in my opinion. I think some of them are a little lazy, at least some of them, some of the ones I have had are a little lazy, 
um, I advocate a lot for myself because I have had so many doctors not take me seriously. And so, advocate. You'll get things done faster. Um, Self-love and care is very, very important. If I didn't love myself and take care of myself uh, to the best of my abilities, um, I wouldn't be in such a, a good like mindset as I am now. You know, when I was a lot less sicker, I was still sick, but I was less, um, my had illnesses have been, like, didn't progress as much. I, like, my mental state, I guess, was so much worse than what it is now. Um, and that's because I love myself. So, if you don't love yourself, I really recommend you looking into... Um, doing that and that can start with like gratitude and um, you know t putting yourself first and um, you know just start out small work up big you know find those things that you love about yourself and focus on those things and that's kind of what I did I just slowly found things that I loved about myself and over time, I started loving more stuff about myself. And the things that I didn't love about myself that I could change, I changed. Or I tried to change, you know, slowly. It's, it's not an overnight process, but I think it's a beautiful process. So I definitely recommend you looking into self-love. Um, my next thing would be to vent. If you don't vent about your frustrations, you know they're going to get all bottled up and um, bottling up your frustrations and your emotions is not good so you know vent about it if you don't have people to vent to there is an app called vent that you can download my next thing would be to have a hobby especially when you can do in your bed because when you're chronically ill you're probably going to end up in your bed a lot of the time especially during bed rest so you know Netflix reading Origami can be done in the bed if you have a desk. Journaling. Um, anything on the computer, you know. Knitting. Art. Stuff that's not messy. Like, I wouldn't paint in your bed, but... My last two things would be support yourself. And, like, believe in yourself. And have, um, support systems. If you don't have, like... If you don't have, like, a personal support system like a family member or a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a sister or a cousin or anything like that. Um, pets are awesome for supporting you. They always seem to know when you're upset. Um, and support groups, especially Facebook ones. Um, I feel like they can be very good for venting out your frustrations and a lot of those people will know exactly what you're going through because you can get a specific support group for whatever illness you have or disability or whatever. So um, before I go I just want to say that it's really not any different from people that are religious. I just don't pray or have faith about things. I more of believe in myself and know if things go wrong I'll figure it out and I'll take care of it. I also notice that since I grew out of my faith that I don't have that like why me aspect about it. I kind of know that um, it's just a matter of life. Some people are sick, some people are not. And um, we're pretty sure a lot of it has to do with my genes because I'm getting sent to a um, geneticist. So just remember you're not alone. Um, you can follow me on all my social media. I'll have it down in the description and thank you for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe.